We're going to start by adding four tracks to our session. We're going to make them software instruments. And let's create four tracks. We're going to name them lead, accompaniment, bass, and rhythm. We're going to go ahead and enter regions on each track like we learned for the previous lesson. Holding down the pencil key. And we're going to make them each four measures long. We're going to loop from measure one to measure five. Now we're going to right click on these and we're going to show hide colors. We're going to color our regions a different color. So we're going to start with lead. We're going to make it more in the purple end of the spectrum. Accompaniment will be blue. Bass will be green, which it already is. And rhythm will be down more like in yellow or red. So we kind of have the look of a rainbow going there. And that just helps us later when we need to identify notes from our different tracks. So what you should have in any DAW that you're using right now is four tracks and a four bar region on each track. Now we're going to go into the first track, the accompaniment track, double click on it to open it in the edit window. And we're going to now enter some notes. Always start with the accompaniment track and then we can add the bass and the, the lead part afterwards. To build my chords, I'm going to open a text editor, and then I'm also going to open a picture of a keyboard just so we can step through it here. This can be found online or in the class. You can find it under the theory module. For this class, we're only going to use white notes. So that means nothing with a flat or sharp on it. None of the black notes up above. They're just straight letters right here. It'll make it much easier for us in this class until you take a theory class. For four bars, we want to start by picking four chords. So we're going to have one chord per bar. And I can pick any letter I want except for B for my first chord. So I'm just going to randomly pick an A for my first chord. Uh, I'll pick an F for my second chord, D, and I'll pick a G. So these are my chords. Those are the root position of each chord. Now I need to build a third and the fifth. I can do that simply by looking at A and going every other white note. So A, skip B, C, and E. A, C, E gives me my first chord. My second chord is F. A, C, F, A, C. My third chord is going to be a D, F, A. Again, I'm going every other white note. And my final chord will be a G, B, D. Root third and fifth sound good together because mathematically the frequencies align with each other. If you start adding other notes, like on this G chord, you add, say, like an A on it, it'll sound very bad and it will not sound like the chord. It's important that you only use these notes when you're building your chords. Don't add other notes on there. We'll talk about that later when we have passing tones and things like that in the melody or the bass. So now I'm going to go back to Logic and I'm going to put these notes in right, these A, C, E chords. I'm going to go ahead and put this down here so that we can see it. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go look by C3. I'm going to find the nearest A. So I come down and I can see this A right here. Now, unfortunately, Logic doesn't put the letters on the keys here. It should be nice if they did. But I'm going to hold down the pencil key and I'm going to enter an A. And what I'd like you to do is to make it one bar long. So a little bit longer than we've done before. I'm going to go ahead and put in the F and the D and the G just so I can see the root notes in each chord. Can make a hold down the option key and drag to do that. I'll put the F, the closest F I can find, starting at measure two. The closest D I can find to that. And the closest G I can find to that. So now I've got four bars with the root note or the first note in the chord somewhere in between C3 and C2. I do not want to go below C2. If you go below C2, your song is going to get too dark and too heavy. You also do not want to go above C4 because then you'll be too high and you'll be in the lead range. Just like we were working with loops, you want to keep the bass, the lead, and the accompaniment in their proper ranges. Now I'm going to add the third and the fifth. So I'll go A. The third of A is C. So I go every other white note and then every other white note again. And I get A, C, E. I can go F, A, C. And I'll go a D, F, A. And my last G, B. I now have a chord progression. It goes A, C, E, F, A, C, D, F, A, G, B, D. That's the start of a song right there. And many, many songs that you've heard make use of progressions very similar to that. The next thing I want to do is make it so I can add additional parts to this song. So I'm going to come over here to this view menu and I'm going to set note color by region. Now you'll see that my notes have turned blue to match that region. And if I come over to the bass region and I click that now and I go ahead and put in my A, F, D, and G, there'll be a different color. Okay, so now I'm going to enter the notes in the bass part. And the bass part, you just want to start with the, re the root notes. So we're going to put in an A, an F, a D, and a G. And we want to do that around C1. 
Now you don't want to get down to C0. It's going to be too low for the bass and you don't want to get up to C2 because it's going to be too high. Start to interfere with the accompaniment part. So I'm going to enter my first note. I'm going to put in an A right here. And it's going to last one measure long. And then I'm going to go to an F. Now, I don't know if you can hear, but that's starting to sound pretty low. And if I go down to this D, it's a little too low. It's going to sound too low. So what I think I'm going to do is actually go up to this D and then the G. And now I can see that maybe this F would be better if I went up here because it's closer to the D and the G. If this D was down here, it would just sound too low. And speakers can't produce frequencies that low. So be careful when you're putting your bass part in to try to stay around C1. Now in Logic, if I highlight both of these regions at once, I can see the different notes represented by the different colors in the two regions at once. Whatever editor you're using may have something similar, but the idea is you want to be able to see your accompaniment and your bass notes at the same time so you can make decisions about them. Once we have the bass notes and the accompaniment chords, we want to look at voice leading. And voice leading is how do the notes change over time? If we look at the bass and accompaniment parts, we'll see that there are basically four voices in them. The bass is easy to see, it's all green. Here's a low note and it moves to this note here, this note here, and this note here. If I were to move that D down an octave where it was too low, you'll see that I have a major jump or leap in there coming from this F down to the D and all the way back up to the G. It's too far. That's not good voice leading and your ear will not hear this as a continuous phrase. It's important to hear the bass line continuing and so what we will do is we'll move that up an octave so it sounds closer. Now you hear, hear this smooth continuation of what we call a voice, the bass voice. In the accompaniment part, we basically have three voices going at once. If you see, there's a bottom, a middle, and a high voice going on, and they move across. But what happens is they start to all move in the same direction at the same time. When we put them in in root position, that's always going to be the case. So we have this A, C, E here, and they're all jumping down to an F, A, C here when really only one of the notes needed to move, right? Because A, C, E, and F, A, C have two of the same notes. So in good voice leading, one of the things you look for is, can I keep two notes the same? And you can in this case, and if we took this F and simply moved it so it was up an octave right here, now you'll see between this chord and this chord, we only had to move one note. That's called voice leading. And that allows our ear to hear this voice, this voice, and this voice being continuous across the two chords. Well, now that we've done that and we've gotten here, we see we have a major jump between these. All three notes are having to jump down, but we do see one that's the same. So what we can do is just go to the worst outlier and move it either up or down an octave. In this case, because it's too low, we're going to move it up an octave. Okay. Now we see I've got pretty good voice leading, but I still have, if this guy's jumping here, this one's jumping down here, and this one's jumping here, it doesn't make sense because you would be crossing over the one that could stay the same. So I'm going to take this lower one and move it up an octave as well. And now you'll see that these two, the top and the bottom voices, get to stay the same, and the only thing that has to change is the middle voice. This is very common in current music that we listen to. The chords have two notes that stay the same between the two chords, and you'll see that only one note had to change between A, C, E, and F, A, C. And then again, only one note had to change between F, A, C, and D, F, A. This is very effective voice leading, and it gives it a suspenseful sound, which we're very familiar with in uh, modern EDM styles. Our last chord you'll see that all the notes jump down. We have one that stays the same here, and this one has to move, and this one has to move. So we might try taking that lowest note and moving it up an octave there, okay? Now, this voice has stayed the same, but both of these have moved. And you'll see that in this chord right here, it maybe doesn't make a difference which way you go. You could go low here, or you could go high here, kind of like all three still have to move, right? The one, well, maybe the high is a little bit better. It's hard to decide there. Uh, you'd have to use your ears to listen to how does it sound when you transition from this chord to this chord and then back to that chord. Does it sound smooth or does it sound like a major jump? What I should see when I'm looking at your assignments is a fairly smooth transition of the voices in the accompaniment part right here. I would accept either that one or this one. The same progression, I might have taken these lower notes and moved them all up an octave. If I wanted a higher sound in my song, this would look acceptable too. And you'll see that they're still below the C4. One of the other things I'm going to be looking for is making sure your accompaniment does not go above C4 or below C2. That concludes the first part of this lesson, which is to create a bass and accompaniment part for your song.